I'm making this video in response to a comment which I received on a video which I posted a couple of weeks back. If you haven't already seen that video, it was where I showed you a profitable strategy using a Bollinger Band breakout on pound yen forex pair on the two hour chart. So as requested, I'm going to show you how to code or program that strategy and then we can backtest, optimize and live trade automatically that same strategy. I use a software called Multicharts. The programming language it uses is called Power Language, which is very similar, almost identical in fact, to Easy Language, which TradeStation uses. You could say that comment about programming was bad timing because I haven't done a programming or a coding strategy video in ages and yet I already had one planned but I thought I'd bring this one forward and maybe I'll do that other video too. Anyway, let's just recap on the rules for the strategy that I'm going to program and then we'll go and start programming. I'll show you the process step by step. Okay, so we're looking at the two hour chart or 120 minute chart of pound yen and we want to put the Bollinger Bands on the chart. And they're Bollinger Bands with just the standard settings of 20 and two standard deviations above and below the center line. Our entry for a long trade, which you can see here, is two closes above the upper Bollinger Band. So on this bar here is where the code is kind of operating. So it, we want to say that the previous bar, the close was below the upper band, but then the close was above the upper band. And then on this bar, the close was above the upper band too. And as soon as we see those two above the upper band, we go long on the open of the next bar. And you can see that here. And this was actually a large winning trade. We we'll just move forward. And we can see that one actually just hit our profit target of 750 pips. Let's look at a short trade example. There was another long trade that was actually a stop loss was hit there. Oh, here's a short trade here. So we're operating on this bar here, which was a close below the lower band, but also the bar before that closed below the lower band, but the bar before that was above. So this bar here, the close had to cross below. So it was above, now it's below, and this bar here had to be below. So that gives us the two bars with closes both below the lower band. And then we short at market on the open of the next bar. And that trade was actually a losing trade as well. So there's our basic entry and exit. And we've also got an optional stop loss and an optional profit target. You can see on the chart at the moment, I do have the profit target set at 750 pips and the stop loss is set at 150 pips with a five to one reward to risk ratio. The rules are pretty straightforward, so it won't take many lines of code to get it working in multi charts. Now, I have to say that although I've created and programmed hundreds and hundreds of trading strategies using multi charts, I'm not a programmer and I don't come from a programming background. So the way that I code and I lay things out in the editor is not going to be the same as what a professional coder would be doing. However, I do like to think that the way I do it is kind of neat and easily understandable and I don't think you'll have a problem in following along. Okay, here we are in the Power Language Editor. This is where we write our code before applying it to a chart in multi-charts. Now, I've already written out some notes here in green. Anything which we start with a double forward slash turns green automatically. And anything that's green is not recognized by the computer when it comes to doing the computing. They are literally just for our notes when we're writing out the code. So starting at the top, I've written the notes. The demo for the Bollinger Band breakout. Now the first thing we're going to do is put in our inputs. Now I've got adjustable in chart values including just the stop loss and the profit target. That's all we want to adjust once our code is written. Once we get the strategy on the chart we can adjust those easily within the chart settings and I'll show you how to do that when we apply it to the chart. Now we can create these inputs, calling them pretty much whatever we want to do. I'm just going to call them my stop, and then we have to give it a value. At the moment I'm going to give it a value of zero. And my profit, and again I'm going to give it a value of zero. You'll see why I'll give it a value of zero a little later in the code. 
The next thing, we need to start our long entry conditions. This is where we actually tell the computer to go long or short. Now, the first part of the condition is the current close, remember we're working on that current bar, has to be above the upper Bollinger Band. Okay, so what we do there is we say, if the close is greater than, and this is where we're going to write Bollinger Band, and you see how that appeared, I didn't actually write Bollinger Band out, that's because multi-chance has Bollinger Band already stored into it. It already knows the calculation for the Bollinger Band. So we don't have to calculate the Bollinger Band calculation just from scratch. But we do have to say, we have to say it's based on the close and we're looking at the value of 20. So that moving average is 20. And we're saying that the close has got to be above the upper band. So the upper band standard deviation or the upper band value is a value of two. If it was the lower band, it would be minus two. And so that's our first part. That's the current close is greater than the upper Bollinger Band. But we also need to see the previous close of the previous bar crossed up above the upper Bollinger Band. So we say now, and the close, and when we put the one like that, that's saying the close of the previous bar So it crosses above Bollinger Band, close, comma 20, comma 2, of the previous bar. We want to be looking at the upper band based on that same previous bar, not on the current bar. Okay, that's why we put the little one there. And once we've got those two conditions, then we just want to say then by next bar at market. Okay, that's our simple entry conditions for long. And now we're gonna do the short conditions and they're gonna be kind of like the mirror image. So if the close is less than Bollinger Band close 20. Now we're gonna say the lower band, so that's actually minus two, not plus two and the close of the bar before that crosses below Bollinger Band close, comma 20, comma minus two for the lower band. Based on the last bar, then sell short next bar at market. And that's our basic entry and exit rules. The code would actually work just like that and that would be our stop and reverse strategy. Now the last thing we just have to do is set the stop loss and the profit target if greater than zero. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now I'm just gonna tell multi-charts to base the stop loss and the profit target per contract. So and now I'm going to say, if, now I'm going to use this input value here, if my stop is greater than zero, then we want to actually use a stop loss. If we leave this as zero, then it's not going to calculate a stop loss. And the same with the profit target. If we leave the profit target at zero, when I write the profit target here, it won't actually use a profit target. Now multicharts has a set stop loss function where it knows exactly what to do. So I'm saying then set the stop loss and in brackets we want the value. And the value, because we want to adjust it, is going to be this my stop input value. And we're going to do the same if my profit is greater than zero, then set profit target at my profit. Okay, I'm just going to change that. Capital letters don't actually matter within the code. And that's our basic code. So we've got our entry conditions for a long trade, entry conditions for a short trade, and of course these are stop and reverse conditions. So if we didn't have a profit target or a stop loss, and if I was long, then when I got the entry conditions to go short, it would automatically exit the long position and then enter a new short position, and vice versa.
Now that we have the program written, the next thing to do is hit the compile button, the Power Language Editor. It will self-check to see if there's any errors, and if there are any errors, it will show us whereabouts or what line the error is so that we can correct it. If it compiles successfully without any errors, then we'll go and apply it to that two-hour chart. Those of you who are paying particularly close attention will notice that I did put in a deliberate error. But just before we do that, those of you who are looking for some more rule-based strategies, I've written out the complete rules to three more rule-based or mechanical strategies and put them together in my 22-page Beat the Markets Strategy Guidebook. At the moment, if you find the link in the description down below, you can download that for absolutely free. If you've already got that guidebook or and you want to take your trading to the next level, then you might want to enrol in my trading course because amongst a lot of other important aspects of trading, in that I include another six profitable rule-based strategies and the links for that are also down below. Okay, let's compile this strategy, see if it will compile successfully without any errors or see if it picks up the error and shows us where we need to correct it. Okay, back to the Power Language Editor and I'm just gonna now hit the compile button to make sure that it compiles without any errors. And it's saying that we've got an error and we're saying we're expecting a semicolon somewhere. So it's highlighted here. What that means is the, the code had a problem just before here. So the last line of the code before we got to here was line 12 and it's saying we're expecting a semicolon and sure enough, look, there isn't a semicolon at the end of at market. So let's put the semicolon in and see if that compiles. And there we go, look, compiled successfully. So that's a neat little feature that MultiChance uses, the sort of self-diagnosis and shows you or gives you a very good idea of where the problem is in the code. Now let's go over to the chart and put the code on. So we're back to this same chart, 120 minute or two hour chart of pound yen. And I'm just gonna right click on the chart, format signals. And I've already got the signal added here. I've actually got my original one for the video switched on. So I'm gonna actually turn that one off and I'm going to turn this one on that I've just created and I can either double click or hit format and this is where our input values show up which we created in the code my stop and my profit they're both set at zero at the moment so they're not going to work if you remember how we coded it so let's close that and we'll see the trades appear on the chart exactly how we wanted them to appear I'll just scroll through um, let's have a bit of a closer look at some of the trades just to make sure. So on this bar here, we've got the close above the upper Bollinger Band. On the bar before, the close crossed above the upper band. So it was below it, it crossed above it. And there's our second close. And we go long on the open of the next bar. We got a short trade here. We got the close below the lower band. The bar before that, the close crossed down below through the, the lower band, and then we go short on the open of the next bar. So that's working properly. Remember, in the video before, we used the stop loss of 150 pips and the profit target of 750 pips. So let's put those in. The way that pound yen is set up in multi charts at the moment, 150 pips is equivalent to 1.5 and 750, 7.5. And you can see on both these trades that they both hit the stop loss of 150 pips. But the code is working exactly how we wanted it to work. So let's have a look at the performance report. And that's what the equity curve looks like over all those years. Look at the size of the average trade, which is always important. 29,000, that's 29 pips. That's a large average trade. Even if we had some costs into this strategy, we're still going to be making money. Oh, in fact, I've already got the costs put in there. I've got a total of four pips, so two pips in and two pips out. So we're still making a decent average trade, even though we've got some costs included. And if and when we're happy with the backtest and we want to actually trade this strategy live, it's quite simple. We just hit this button up here and that will actually turn on live trading. 
There's a few other bits we have to just make sure that the broker's connected correctly and our trade position size. We can write the position size or the lot size within the code itself, or we can just do it from here, from the properties, and put it in here. At the moment, I've got this back to set at 100,000 units or one whole lot, and that's where we can adjust our trade size when we're live trading. So that's how you go from a trading strategy idea with rules written out in plain English to programming it and testing it using software. In this case, we were using multi-charts. What did you think of the process? Did you think it was easier or harder? Let me know in the comments. Like I said earlier, I didn't come from a programming background. Ultimately, I'm a trader first, but I just picked up the programming as I went along, as I came up with new ideas and I had to work out how to get multi-charts to do exactly what I wanted. There's a handy keyword reference manual for power language or multi-charts, and it's just a free online thing from multi-charts. I'll leave the links for that down below if you're using multi-charts, and it's something that I've used quite a bit to work out if I can do something or how I can do something. Okay, so thanks for staying till the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content a little bit like this. I'll hopefully see you next week, but until then, this is Jared Goodwin and thank you.